Hi, my name is Adam. This is actually the first screencast I've ever done. Uh, in it, we're going to explore a question asked by Charles on how we can recreate this isometric maze. I call it isometric because I'm sure if I took my protractor out, we would figure out that these lines are on a 30 degree plane. Uh, another thing in this, we're going to explore kind of the nature of gradients and light. Uh, but briefly, we should probably talk about being isometric. I'm going to mathforum.org. And one of the key principles is that all of our angled lines are going to be at 30 degrees. That's opposed to a two vanishing point um, 3D drawing where we see the angles kind of vary. Now we could create this maze uh, using an isometric grid, but I find that process to be kind of a little more taxing and it takes a little bit longer. Uh, so we're not going to do that. We're instead going to make our own um, 30 degree guidelines. If we kind of see below, this is actually pretty much what we're going to be doing without the little embellishment and kid coloring. But yeah, let's start uh, making a document, going into Adobe Illustrator, making a new document, calling it Isometric Maze. Gonna make it a thousand by a thousand. Keep the raster effects at 300 just so the gradients look nice. Uh, and this is an important principle. We're gonna uncheck align new objects to pixel grid. The reason for this is it becomes kind of an annoying thing when Adobe Illustrator is manually or excuse me, automatically um, changing your guidelines to make them go where you don't want to. So to avoid that, we're going to just uncheck it. Great. We have our new isometric maze document. We're going to first change this layer to drawing. We're going to create a new layer for our guidelines. And in our drawing layer, we are going to make a square or rectangle by selecting the M key or going to the rectangle tool. Uh, we're going to make it 600 by 600 because actually if we go back to the question, we can kind of see that from this point to this point, it appears to be equal. And from this point to this point it appears to be equal. And of course, from this point to this point. So kind of breaking it down into thirds. So 600 is actually a nice round number um, that we can break into thirds by 200, 200, and 200. So I'm going to change my fill to nothing, and I'm going to align this to my artboard by vertically aligning the center and horizontally aligning the center. We can now make our guidelines um, by going into the guidelines layer and make sure that view snap to point is checked because that will allow our guides to snap to these points we've created with our rectangle. I'm using a Mac so when I say command or option you should translate that to control or alt if you're using a Windows computer. So I'm going to hit command R to show my ruler tool. I'm going to pull a guideline until I reach the first um, line segment of my rectangle. And it's important, as you can see, this uh, select this arrow is a white arrow, which means I'm snapping to point. We can verify that by zooming in and seeing that it's correctly um, aligned with our point. I'm going to back out. I'm going to make another guide on this other side. I'm going to actually select the drawing layer, the rectangle, and add a guideline in the middle. I've actually added that to my drawing layer, so we're going to move that back down to the guides. Although we've, whoa, what is going on? Although we've made this rectangle, we could delete it. It's not necessary. Now we're kind of at a point where we need to make a isometric, the top to an isometric cube. Because if you look at it, this is really an isometric cube that we're looking into. So we need to make these 30 degree 
lines and we're going to do that by using guidelines it's a uh, kind of not a well-known fact that we can actually make 30 degree lines with guides I'm gonna make sure that I can select guides so I'm gonna go to view guides and make sure lock guides is not selected and this will allow us to actually click on these guys I'm gonna bring down a guideline select it then I'm gonna hit R or go to the rotate tool and hit enter I'm gonna change the angle to 30 degrees hit OK then I'm gonna move this and snap it to the points we've already created I'm gonna duplicate this by holding the alt key and selecting this line and snapping it to that point we can actually duplicate this guideline by hitting the R key or going to the rotate tool hitting enter to bring it back the other way and make it perpendicular to our line if we went to negative 30 degrees that's horizontal so we're gonna need to go to negative 60 degrees hit OK oops actually I'm gonna undo that go back into the rotate tool hit enter go to negative 60 and hit copy perfect so I'm gonna move this and make sure it snaps to this point we've created sometimes it doesn't do it exactly so it's important to go in there and verify it uh, go back and duplicate it using the same method we used prior and snapping it to that point perfect uh, there's a lot going on right now but we basically created our isometric cube top uh, we're going to select the pen tool go into our, our drawing layer and make the top of the cube now I'm just briefly doing it I'm probably not selecting perfect points so I'm going to actually go in and modify these by selecting it with the direct selection tool and making sure they're all to point I actually don't think I have a stroke on it now so we're gonna add one and I'm gonna modify all those points to make sure they're perfectly on our guidelines and you'll notice that every time we do that there will be a small adjustment to uh, the arrow so it's black here and it's a little plus arrow and it's white and that just allows us to know that we are actually aligning it perfectly to our edge and of course I'll get the last line over here I'm gonna turn off the guides by hitting command semicolon and there we have the top to our isometric maze I'm going to pause the video here, and in the next video, I'm going to go into how we make our walls, and the third video will take care of how we make our gradients.